All right, so I've got to get off the 80 series again now and back into 69. All right, so it went for Roadworthy, or uh, well, the Roadworthy dude came out here, uh, checked it over. He failed a couple of things. So we've got one CV boot to do and a pair of rear shocks. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. So let's just get into it and make this thing happen. So GoPro being the fantastic platform it is, has given me corrupted files again. So what I've done is I've pulled out all that. I'm gonna change the shocks. This is all to get access to the top of the shock. So all of this panel has to come out to get access to the corresponding top of the shock on the other side. How much do I love GoPro? Not at all. I'm just over it. All right, now finish me dummy spit. Let's get back into, so I've got to pull all this out. What I've had to do is unbolt the seats, slide them forward so that I could get access to the seat belts, which bolt in just in there. Or you can see where they bolt in on the other side. They're already undone. All right, so I've got to pull out this panel here. See if we can get a video that's not corrupt this time. Underneath all of these, there's um, screws and bolts. Stick the screws in there, they just lock in place. Um, okay, so we've got one there. That was loose, finger tight. So, come on, come out, buggy ya. They've got a plastic pin on them. Another one down here. That one feels like it might have been cross threaded. It's Phillips head up the top here. This drink holder's got to come out. Let's get into there somehow. It just pulls up. All right, so there's another one under that cover. Seat out of the way here. There's another one under this cover here. We can get into it. Um, let's move that back. Get into there. Ah, there is one. Well, you've got to take the cup holder out. This is one under there. There's another 10 minutes up there. Oh, there's another one down there. No, one more down here. All right, got to pull these. This wind lacing off. Door seals. Oh, you got to pull out the football protector. That's it there. Let me pull that out. Okay, so we lift that up and out. Okay, that's it under there. Yeah, there's another clip here somewhere. I've got to pull the um, wind lacing off again, or seal or gasket. You know, I've heard a few people call them different things, but I've always known it as a wind lace. Stops the wind noise. Don't get that out. Pull the. It's okay. In behind, in behind here, there's a plug. Maybe. Not that easy. I've got to get this plug out somehow. There we go, plug's undone. And that should slip straight out. Maybe. There we go. So now after all that, we've actually got access to both of the top shock mounts. Probably more work in pulling the interior out of these things and pulling that apart than actually changing the shock absorbers. Shock absorbers are gonna be pretty straightforward, I think. So before we go any further, I think I might give this a bit of a clean out. I'm a bit sick of working in this crud. All right, there we go. It looks all nice and clean again in the back there. It's about as good as it's gonna get. All right, there we go. Let's get these shockers undone at the tops. Maybe. Time to get the old snap-on set out. Bigger than that, and smaller than that. Of course it's gonna be a weird friggin' size, isn't it? 
and just have to do it the old fashioned way. Right, so there's really nowhere to jack and put a, a jack stand under these things. So, let's have a quick look under there, I don't know if we can see much. I'm not keen on pulling the jack out and leaving it on a jack stand, I think that still might collapse. So I'm just going to do one at a time, I'll whip this wheel off, get that shock out and uh, we should be laughing. Right, I should be able to get under here and uh, under this by hand. Yes, look at that. There we go. Get the right size on, 17mm, rattle gun, 17mm socket. <laughs> it's that easy. Alright, and there we go. Fuck shocks on the ground. Let's put it down a bit, pull this crap off. Compresses pretty easily. Alright, so I've got the hardware on one end. Just um just compress this down a touch. Which is not real hard to do. And I'm able to hold that there with one hand. So I'm gonna point that straight up into its hole. Look at that. Bottom bolt in. I won't make that tight yet. Go up top with the rest of the hardware. Those top rubbers were pretty good, but I will replace them anyway. So that's just flat, so that'll be easy to tighten up. Hold on to if I need to. I don't want to put a vice grip on the bottom. It's um that's a nice new shot. I don't want to scar it up. No mill on there. Go and get on there, fuck yeah. There we go. And it's in. One side's done. I'm not going to film the other side. You know, it is what it is. It's changing a shock absorber. Three and a half, maybe four hours to strip and refit all of this and 15 minutes aside to do the shocker. I'm pretty chuffed that it's done. Another job's finished. Still gonna do the CV boot, but that's gonna be for another day. All right, so don't forget, like, subscribe, comment, particularly like. So if you're still watching to the end here, thank you very much. Oh, on the last video, there's a lot of work went into that and I lost two subscribers. I don't know whether it's YouTube or people just don't like seeing what really goes on in a workshop. Um, it's not all, you know, beer and skittles and uh, definitely not in my shed. You come here, you see me, I do everything. I don't have a uh, magical mate come in and build me a motor or do any of that sort of stuff that certain people do and make it look like everything is just so good that it can't be real. Well, this is real. This is what actually happens in my shed at least. All right, catch us next time. Take it easy. Ciao. Bye.